Welcome to chapter and verse. Ray Dempsey has another good show. Joseph, Julie. Uh, with, our, with our life movement, our pro-life movement, we're so happy to have Joseph and Julie with us today. In the morning mail, we have a video uh, which is available on the internet. It, it's uh, freely available on the internet. If you go to www.180movie.com, 180movie.com, you can see this video which lasts for 33 minutes. It's about the subject which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. The subject of um, one of the hottest social issues we have before us. Joseph, you had seen it, you said, at some event? The movie? Did you see the movie at some yes, event? Yes, I did. I saw it online and I saw it elsewhere. Online? It's very powerful, very powerful. Mm -hmm. It attacks the question of abortion in our society and comes at it by comparing it to Hitler's genocide. Yeah. which killed millions, but our abortion holocaust is mm -hmm. ten times as bad. Mm -hmm. It is. It is ten mm -hmm. times as bad. We've, um, we've killed more than 50 million uh, children now. 50? 50. 50 million. 50 million. Hitler only killed about 12 million. Yeah, which is only. Only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is terrible. Another book uh, which came in the morning mail is a book called Speaking of Dying, kind of a apropos for our subject matter tonight. And it is, it is um, by Fred Craddock and Dale and Joy Goldsmith. It's a, it's a book about pastors and how pastors can face the issues of dying uh, in the opinion of these authors better than they're doing right now, they're, by making their dying a better experience for themselves, for their families, and for their congregations. And they uh, have to, pastors, Yeah. Well, they have to, you know, tell the, um, what is it, it's the speech at the uh, funerals, you know? Yes. Yeah, they have the, to speak. Great responsibility. The eulogies. The yeah. eulogies. The eulogy. Yeah, people, people go to yeah. them for comfort. Yes. They're, they're very important. Mm. Um, Julie, why don't we uh, start with you. Um, how did you become involved in uh, the life movement? In the pro-life movement? Um, well, I became Catholic in 1998, and um, I was looking for now my responsibility in the church because I had just freshly joined and I was looking for a ministry. And um, I wanted to join the choir, but it didn't quite work out that well. And uh, you know, God puts things in our place for a purpose. I didn't, I didn't think that I would be where I am today if he hadn't placed that in front of me. So he placed a, a bulletin in the book. Um, an ad in the bulletin for a, a Respect Life program that was just starting up at the church I had just become um, initiated into. And I knew immediately that was the Holy Spirit speaking because I had had abortions in my past. And I, I just felt the call. I knew that oh, beautiful. that was what I was meant to do. God was ready to use you. He was ready. So I wasn't quite ready, but, <laughs> you know, just took that step forward. He'll do it. He flows through you. He does. And so I, I joined the program, and um, and just one thing led after another. He just led me to um, different um, events. Where was this? Certain church? or It was a Catholic church down in North Kingstown. Oh, Kingstown, North yeah. Kingstown. And I think I've been, was it Christ the King? Uh, no, in North Kingstown. Oh. St. Francis de Sales. Oh. That's where I was initiated. And... Um, and I just, it just kept blooming from there until... St. Francis de Sales, that sounds familiar. Don't they have admissions across the United States, St. Francis de Sales? St. Francis sounds so de Sales. familiar. No. Yeah, he's um, the saint that you know, had... Different branches, um, Salesians? Uh... Salesians. No. Yeah. And um, he's the one who um, has the prayer... Um, Lord, I'm going to mess this up, but um, make me an instrument of your peace. Yeah. Uh, mm. 
let me be the peacemaker, not, let me, let me, help me to console, not to look for consolation myself. So it's yeah. all about giving of yourself, like being selfless, removing yourself, letting the Here Holy I Spirit. Am, Lord. That yes. song, I like that song. Yes, allowing yeah. the Spirit to enter yeah. and do His work and get out of the way. Yes. You know? Amen. So that's what I've been trying to do ever since. Do you, do you find it, how, how do you find it, um, having, a, a, having a, an abortion history, how is it useful? Uh, so, sometimes I, I think that, that perhaps God will have you lead the way. I was afraid at first. I was afraid to tell anybody. In fact, when I first joined the pro-life movement, I didn't tell anybody. And then God had other plans because he presented these opportunities in front of me, like testifying at the State House when nobody knew my story. They wanted me to speak as a, a woman of childbearing years. And I knew then that was the Holy Spirit calling wow. too. Mm -hmm. And um, I just had said no all my life. And I decided I need to say yes. When I, the more I say yes, the more things God shows me, tremendous things that I don't know why I spent so much time, you know, wasting my time saying no and not letting the Lord lead me. Submission. Mm. Yeah. How yes. important it is to God, submission. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> but I was afraid at first. I, I thought I would be judged, condemned. I thought maybe mm. I'd even be thrown out of the church. Uh, but none of that happened. Um, God is so good. He God had great God plans loving, for you. Loving things. And, and I ended up um, <laughs> moving down the street from the abortion clinic where I had had one of my oh, abortions gosh. and I didn't know and I drove down the street just to look at the area and there were there was Joe at the Joseph. clinic <laughs> and, uh, and the truck and the signs and, and I knew immediately oh I, I've been here and um, I knew that God was calling me obviously moving half a mile away from where I had committed that sin to come back there to do his work. So, um, how beautiful! A beautiful testimony. Yeah. You have a special testimony. It's a special testimony yeah. because it, it's it's one people people can't say that you're that you're just an inexperienced goody two shoes who hasn't ex, hasn't um, been in the world um, and. Uh, is therefore not cognizant or knowledgeable or experienced with the problems that a lot of other people have. Yeah, well, I had to open my eyes and then I had to say yes. You know, I had the truth had to enter mm -hmm. for me to be able open to. Open your spiritual eyes. And but mm -hmm. God's grace, you know. Yes. I, oh, yeah. I would not be there but God. Joseph, yeah. how did you become involved? <laughs> uh, it was 1978 when I was in the Catholic Church and I. I came to the Lord through the seminar and the spirit, through the charismatic movement, and uh, I wanted to have my prayers answered. I wanted to read the Bible, and uh, before that, it was just dust to me. And uh, where was this church, Joseph? Pardon? Where was this church? St. John the Evangelist in Wellesley, Massachusetts. Oh, Wellesley. Yeah, we lived there for 30 years, and. Uh, I went to this seminar on the Spirit, and they said, read chapter 2 of Acts and see what happened to those disciples who were in the upper room. And the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit came down on them in fire, and they came out of there like gangbusters. They uh, turned the world upside down because the Holy Spirit now lived and dwelt in their hearts. Oh, how beautiful. And changed everything. Changed the whole equation. Mm -hmm. Transformed into a likeness of Christ. Yeah. Before that, they knew Christ. They knew him resurrected. They, they had seen him, they touched him, mm. and yet they didn't have any power. It was only when the Holy Spirit came down on mm -hmm. them, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is what I received in the charismatic movement, and it turned me completely around. Oh, praise I God. I could read the Bible and just dwell on the Lord and pray. And Ready to use, but be used by the Lord. Yes, yes. And then 10 years later, I went to a uh, movie theater and. Newton, Massachusetts, where they were showing The Last Temptation of Christ, which is a, a blasphemous movie. Mm. And uh, there was these uh, uh, Protestants and Catholics outside the movie protesting it. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, GE funded that movie 
uh, General the, Electric. The money. General oh, they're Electric. so rich, General Electric. Oh. <laughs> they are ultra rich. <laughs> oh, well, ultra foolish. And they funded it. I don't believe they ever got a good return on their money. Oh, no. Which no, is no, very they, interesting. They, which, yeah. Because a handful of people came out against it wherever it went. And to this day, it's held up as blasphemy. So it failed. But I didn't know around the corner was a, an abortion clinic. Mm -hmm. And somebody pointed that out to me, and I saw it in the newspaper that that there was Operation Rescue was protesting at these mm. places, 1988. What was the movie about? The movie, Last this Temptation of Christ? Blasphemy against blas Christ. And it was a blasphemous picture of Christ. It was a mm. story, a uh, total defamation of God's oh. Holy Son. Tragic. Yeah, so it was uh, terrible. So we protested that. But as a result of that, I became involved in Operation Rescue when we went to uh, the clinics and uh, protested and hand out literature and we also uh, sat at the doors and the cops took us away and put us in jail and tried us. Uh, you know, the, the court system tried us. We did that, I did that for about five years and then uh, we stopped uh, rescuing and uh, went to the sidewalk and signed our counseling. <clears throat> And I've been doing that since that time. Uh, I moved down here in 96, and I've been doing it in Rhode Island in the beginning of 97 till now. And uh, going to the abortion clinics mm -hmm. and offering help to the girls and uh, giving the witness of Jesus Christ at the clinics. And uh, the people have been impacted, but see, we're not totally we're not called for success. Mm -hmm. If everybody turned around, that would blow my mind. You know, I don't expect it. But what it was called to be is faithful and to mm -hmm. give people an alternative, the help, the information they need, and a choice, uh, a real choice. Uh, the clinics don't all want that, obviously. They, they're in business to kill children and make money. Uh, so I've been doing that, and I've been moderately, you know, a few people here and there are turned and with the blessings from God that we see these and talk to these. And Julie and I recollect a number of them, but that is not the major issue in a sense where the witnesses for Christ on the sidewalk testifying that this is a brutal, violent act against women and children and it's destroying us and everybody who's attendant and isn't against it, isn't speaking out against it, is complicit in the act. They're accomplices. Anybody who isn't working against it. Uh, and so we have to speak uh, as, as prophets of old had to speak against when Israel was, was caught in their sins and the prophets told them, turn away, turn away. And they refused and they, Israel was destroyed, driven out driven out to the ends of the earth. And we have to be prophets now as witnesses for Christ to these women and, and uh, the men going with them, the families, the mothers taking their daughters, the fathers taking their daughters, all these people doing these things that they've got to recognize what's happening. Now, our, our witness is weak and poor, mm -hmm. but that's what God uses, weak people. Yeah. You know, one of the things I admire so much about what you're doing in the, in the, in the name of God is you're, you, you, you may be the only people who value uh, the lives and the souls of <coughs> the, the children and the women um, who are coming into those facilities. Um, there's nobody else to speak for the child. There's, there's just nobody else there. It's kind of like a rush to death. And you stand in the way, or at least you try to stand in the way. Um, I think that's um, wonderful. Now, if... Such heroes. Now, there are people in the audience um, today some of whom are considering abortion. Mm. <clears throat> what would you say to them? <laughs> Reconsider, first of all. Reconsider what you're doing. Uh, 
Watch the 180 on the machine, on the computer. That's oh. powerful. That's 180. powerful. Yes, yes. Uh, there's help available. Uh, and and uh, we have crisis pregnancy centers throughout this state and throughout the nation. I believe there's 2,700 crisis pregnancy centers throughout the United States, whereas we only have about between seven and 900 abortion clinics anymore when we used to have thousands of abortion clinics. Uh, they're consolidating and retreating, but they're not finished. And uh, uh, the, the genocide goes on. And, uh, but Julie can tell you better what we've got to help people with. Yeah, well, I would tell them that God's mercy and love is far greater than any situation they could be yes. in. But there's no situation that would warrant the killing of an innocent human being as justified. And a lot of women aren't thinking of it in that sense. I didn't think of it in that sense. I was thinking, uh, I was believing the lies that were being told to me that um, it's just tissue and but that is a yes, valuable like human the, uh, being. Clinic, it's a valuable, definitely. And they're still saying the same things. The abortion of centers. That it's, it's a valuable, precious human being made in the image and likeness of God. And whatever the circumstances, that God will be there with them. That there is no um, situation that can't be assisted by God's help. And also by good people willing to help their like Joe said, crisis pregnancy centers that help women get off yes. their feet when, when they're having the baby, even during the pregnancy, that people that will take them to their appointments, mm -hmm. um, people called Gabriel Praise Angels God. that will mentor them. Um, baby so clothes. Baby clothes. Baby cribs, furniture. Diapers. Yes. You know, really showing them the love of Christ so that they can stand in, in strength and courage through that situation. Isn't it amazing how God makes the fetuses tiny little fingers? Mm. You can yeah. see the body parts. Yeah. What is yeah. it? In the first trimester, you could actually see something. Oh, sure. oh, yes. oh yeah. Yeah. Eight weeks. Yeah. 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 Six weeks, you can hear the heartbeat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, clearly a human being, and and they should consider going to get an ultrasound because then they can actually see. It's hard because you're thinking. Well, a woman's pregnant, but we can't visibly see that other human being. It's easy to to justify, uh, you know, the, the action because of it. Oh gosh! You know, this ten is the weeks. size of a oh. ten-week um, baby. Um, clearly, the all the parts needed for a human being at conception, but clearly you There's can see them in yeah. the ultrasound. It's a full human being. Um, needs time and development in order to survive outside of the womb. That's the actual size. Though. This is an actual ten size weeks. of a ten-week. And look at that. It's fetus. got the arms, yes. different appendages from the body. Yeah. The fingerprints, the nose. Heartbeat, yeah. Fingerprints, the whole thing. Heartbeat, like Brain you said. Waves. Yeah. Isn't that something? Equipped. So, yes. you know, I would. And ask, I knew you when you were within the mother's womb. Yes. Before you were within. Yeah. Yes. God yes. says in the Psalms. Bible. I knew yes. you before Psalms. I formed. I before I formed you, I knew before you. Before I formed, yes. how beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, and he oh, knows beautiful. how many hairs, he can count the hairs on her head, he already yes. knows, you know, before we're even created. Yeah. So, you know, physically created. <clears throat> so, I would tell them, go to a crisis pregnancy center, mm -hmm. get an ultrasound, you know, see the reality of what is with you, a precious another human being, and then ask for the help, because it's out there. How do you find a crisis pregnancy center? Um, well, it used to be when I um, had had abortion, I opened up the yellow pages under A, and the first thing I remember being on that page was abortion services. And now it's different because um, it has um, abortion God. alternatives. Oh, alternatives. So um, there are crisis pregnancies here in Rhode Island. There's mm -hmm. the Mother of Life Center on Atwell's Ave. There's a Mother of Life Center down in Westerly. Um, there's um, the Diocese of Providence that has called what's called the Gabriel Project. Um, we have CareNet on Elmwood Ave. Um, what am I the missing? Newport. Has Newport has um, a, a, a crisis pregnancy. Women to women yeah. crisis pregnancy. You mentioned Westerly. Uh, in Attleboro, so right around. They're probably, all over. No, right around us. Well, you had produced a show years and years ago, the Epic Studio. That's yes. how far back it was. And yeah. you had a crisis pregnancy center, you know, the uh, uh, um, director on. Oh. I remember. Oh. Two females, was it? 
was so far back. And There's the other cable television studio. We also had uh, an after abortion <clears throat> program we did with a physician, a pediatrician, whose name, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember just now. Uh, she used to, she worked for um, John Primo's effort for a while. He had a wonderful, he still has a wonderful program on, on cable. And she worked with, with um, him for a while. And um, You had John Primo on years and years ago. Oh, that's right, we had John remember on. Remember John? Yeah, that's right. We've, um, we've been around for a while. Yeah, 30 years. <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> Sometimes there's a lot of things that we've done. I can't remember some of Yeah, John Primo, <laughs> remember? I do, I do remember that. The other studio, then again, it was so far back. Yeah. 15, years and years and years ago. programs. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's quite a few to try and remember. Yeah. You know, I think the other thing, too, I'd like to mention that that a woman considering abortion should do is to edu educate herself on the procedure itself. A lot of women don't even know what's going to occur. Isn't it brutal? It's violent. A different it's procedures. It's a violent, horrible act. And, what a murder. You know, some people used to say, well, the coat hanger method, it's the same procedure, only it's using surgical instruments. So they cut the baby apart. They slice the baby. That's the only way to get the baby out. You know, at six, eight, And they get the vacuum eights. and suck out the different appendages. Yeah, it's a horrible Little fingers, piece of the skull, procedure. suck it out. Then they put it together like a puzzle. They have to. They, they have, have to. They won't know Make if they've sure they have everything all. from yeah. the mother's womb. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, how and tragic. It, during it that is. process, it there was, are... It's really terrible. There are physical consequences to the woman also. <clears throat> um, they can perforate the uterus and mm -hmm. she can bleed to death. She can be uh, rendered infertile from that procedure. Mm -hmm. All sorts of complications can occur, and they're not told when they're gone in, when they go in. That those How about burning the poor fetus to death with a saline solution? Yeah, that's Is it true. saline yeah. they use? Yeah. I, I'm not, I, yeah, so I'm that's not sure how long it's been used, used, yeah, but, mm. uh, but it, any way you slice it, it's a terrible, horrible procedure that not mm. only takes the life of an innocent human being, but physically, spiritually, and psychologically harms or emotionally harms the woman. Yes. How about partial birth abortion? They knife the baby with a long, sharp scissors, I suppose, in the back of the neck or the skull. That's when it's out. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. when everything but the head is out. And they get the back of the neck, and they open it up, suck out the brain. So they, the brain, yes. So yeah. they can take the skull out easily. Now it's collapsed. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a brutal, oh, what a murder. It's a brutal oh, crime. Oh, dear God. A woman yes. in Chicago just died last week at a Planned Parenthood <clears> clinic. Uh, she was uterus was perforated and the baby wasn't fully taken out so there was an infection in there yes they, they, they took her to the emergency room the emergency room doctor said they never tell us what's happened mm -hmm. so yeah. we have to diagnose the whole thing mm -hmm. it took time to do that the delay caused such a delay that the woman ended up dying uh, when they went in to operate and find out take out the, the unborn baby the pieces and uh, they, they failed in their attempt to save the woman. She died. So Planned Parenthood is holding the, the bag on that one. You know, they did it. And we'll see what happens. The president spoke in support of Planned Parenthood that same, right after that occurrence. But, you know, how can you support that kind of an operation? Yes. Mm. They put the bodies in the uh, big, dark trash bags. You know, if it's, it's, as if it's rubbish. This well, is God's children. No, I, I, don't, I don't know if they do that anymore. This is God's creation. I think they grind them up in the commercial grinder and send them down the sewer. That's well, my understanding. And there are also parts, mm -hmm. you know, parts are sold also into the scientific field, the research field. Brown University and people. I uh, so, talked with a physician from Women's and Infants Hospital. I was just in a conversation with him, and I asked him about he was working on the ER for, at Women's and Infants. And I said, do you get any um, cases from the local abortion facilities? And he says, oh yes, we regularly get them. I think he said one or two a month or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he, he said that um, uh, here, right here in Rhode Island, there are women who are in trouble after having undergone elective abortions um, in the local facilities. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that the local facilities uh, don't ever call the rescue squads. 
for a pu for a public uh, uh, to leave a public record, they call private ambulance services to um, to whisk people away in case there's an emergency. Yeah. There's also been stories told to us uh, about young girls that have just been let go. You know, just they leave it to to fate what's going to happen to her rather than tell her that you know this bleeding won't stop. So oh gosh. How um, dangerous! It's very dangerous. It's 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 dangerous. <clears throat> it's um, uh, harmful. There there is no nothing good about abortion, um, and a lot of times uh, people will justify because it's legal. It must be okay because how could we legalize something so horrible and terrible? But it's you know, it's the deceit that's covered over what what's really happening. We have to expose the truth, the truth of what's really happening. And even as gruesome as it is, and a lot of people, you know, uh, reject the pictures of aborted fetuses. Um, but that is the absolute truth of what's happening. If we don't see that truth, we might not um, understand what really is happening. People driving by really need to know. It looks like a nice facility. You know, the, the landscaping's nice. You know, it's a brick building. Looks like any other medical center or, or uh, you know, uh, business park, but what's happening inside is gruesome and ugly, and we need to really expose that truth. Well, isn't there a restaurant back to back with the one in Providence? Um, oh, just, yeah, something August. like a grill or some restaurant, restaurant or something. Right back, yeah. There are a few, yeah. There's yeah. some restaurants, yeah. a couple of bars, a couple of bars. Yeah, it's uh, abutting it, yes. Right next to it is a, a animal clinic, a veterinary service. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Help you know, save the lives, of, the the lives of animals next oh, to the building so that's sad. taking yeah. the life of children. So, yeah. uh, Joe and I talk a lot. The world is upside down right now. What's bad is considered good. What's good is considered bad. Mm. Standing out in front of the clinic. Yeah, it says with, that in the Bible too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. standing out in front of the clinic with signs and trying to stop women from making that choice or, or encourage them to make a different choice. Uh, you know, sometimes people view that as horrible, like we are somehow interfering in people's personal choices. Um, but we know the babies can't speak for themselves, way. like you said. You know, that's right. Yeah. Somebody's got to speak for them. Yep, that's our job. So. I, I was following a man, following a man and woman into the clinic at Planned Parenthood, and he said, "Get away from me. That, that's not you're not decent. You're, you're not doing anything decent. Get away." I said, talk about decent. You're going to go in and kill your child? You're telling me decency? I was aghast at that. But, you know, we, we have mm -hmm. a different view of the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, time is running short. Did, you, uh, did our Janice say we have two minutes? Two minutes left, yeah. Two minutes. So well, that went fast. <laughs> did, that went fast, yeah. <laughs> to, uh, speak to. Speak, there might be a, a woman who you, you'll meet in a couple of days. Yes. Speak to her now when you have a, a second or two more than you'll have yes. later on. Yeah. Yeah. Look into yeah. that camera there. Yeah. And, and speak to her. I, I, I would tell her that uh, she's making one of the worst choices of her life, but she can at any moment turn back and see that God's waiting for her to help her. And the people are going to speak to her at the clinic, and they're on her side. They're not against her. They love her and want to help her. They're offering a hand of help, love and grace, and God speaking through them, and to listen to them, and turn back. And I would say um, I carry a sign that says, I regret my abortion. That's not for my own sake but for the sake of you and your child to help you to make a better choice. And I would say, don't be afraid to have this baby. Don't be afraid, because God is with you always. Even when the world is against you, God is with you. And we are there only because we care about what happens to you and your child. And to give you the good news that Jesus Christ is our Lord, and if we turn to him, we can do all things through him. Nothing is impossible with God. And um, if you don't really know that yet, just come and talk to us. We're mm. here to help, and we're here to be there for you. Oh, thank you again, Joseph, Julie. God's 
heroes for the unborn. Not really. No. <laughs> God loves the unborn. God uses so crack very pots. <laughs> God loves the unborn. He loves you and